Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger, and this is the long-awaited and most requested Lotus Wrong Build video. Let's go! The Militia Gaming Community and Dave Loves Games came together to create a community Discord. If you'd like to join the Discord, there's an invite link in the description down below. This is officially car number 28. There are 27 other cars that I've tested. If you're interested in checking those out, I'll leave a link to the builds playlist in the description below. If you've been following my builds, you know exactly how these tests go, but if not, go back to one of my earlier tests so you can see the methods. I don't want to bore anyone with the process every single time I do a video like this, so I'm diving straight into the meat and potatoes. The Lotus was fairly easy to test. There were only two engines that gave this car a 400 plus rating, and one outperformed the other by a decent margin. The 308 horsepower 2.8 liter flat 6 is the winner. I was able to run a 255.5 on Arian, which puts this car just outside the top 10 at number 11. Again, this is just my personal top 20. On Aardvark, I was able to run a 435 flat, which again is just outside my top 10 at number 12. These times came after I tested tires and gearboxes, in which I found the track tires to be the fastest and the 8-speed gearbox to work the best for an automatic transmission setup. If you're driving manual, the 7-speed is often the best choice. The back end of this car likes to slide out quite a bit, so I decided to go with the track tires and then drop the downforce by two steps. I tested the race tires with the downforce up, but it really hurt the car's already weak top speed. As a track car overall though, this thing really isn't bad at all. It only really struggles to get from 200 to 230 miles per hour, which can be a letdown in longer, straighter races, but for the majority of the tracks in this game, it works out really, really well. It's got a very tight turning radius, which yields excellent cornering, and it's a very light car, so low end acceleration is very good. I also recommend the Super Brakes instead of the Elite. I honestly wish I could equip the Sport or the Pro Brakes because they still bite just a little too hard and I found myself over braking going into corners a lot. So definitely pick the Super Brakes, not the Elite ones. Alright, so the full build looks like this. 308 horsepower flat 6 engine, Ultimate Plus engine parts, Ultimate Dual Turbo, Ultimate 5x3 pound NOS, Super Track Suspension, Super Brakes, Elite Track Tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Elite Plus 8-Speed Gearbox, Super Track Differential, Minimum Steering Sensitivity, and Downforce Down 2. Let's move on. As a drag car, it performs well due to its low weight. It puts up a 8.6 quarter mile with a 1.970 to 60. After testing all of the gearboxes, the 8-speed was once again the fastest option, paired with the same 308 horsepower flat 6 engine. The 8.6 quarter mile puts the Lotus at number 11 out of the 30 cars that I've tested, but with NOS, I'd be willing to bet it can compete with anything except the Beetle. My full drag build looks like this. 308 horsepower flat 6 engine, Ultimate Plus engine parts, Ultimate Dual Turbo, Ultimate 1x15 pound NOS, Super Track Suspension, Super Brakes, Elite Drag Tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Elite Plus 8 Speed Gearbox, Super Track Differential, and Minimum Steering Sensitivity and Minimum Downforce. As a drift car, this car underperforms. I expected a better drift experience and I was let down. There are so many cars that can do it better, so I'm not going to waste much time on this section. After a lot of playing around with different builds, the build that allowed me to 3 star some of the events, but not without a lot of effort, was the 308 horsepower flat 6 engine, ultimate plus engine parts, ultimate dual turbo, and ultimate 5x3 pound NOS. I used the Super Speed Cross Suspension, Super Brakes, Elite Drag Tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Elite Plus 8-Speed Gearbox, and Pro Drift Differential with a maximum steering sensitivity and minimum downforce. 
Now you can use any parts you'd like. The three most crucial parts on this build are the speed cross suspension, the drag tires, and the pro drift differential. You also want to have maximum steering sensitivity so that you can swing the car left and right easily and minimum downforce so that it slides out just a little bit easier. Those are the keys to this build. Everything else can be whatever the highest tier parts that you have available. But again, this is not a good drift car, so I would recommend trying anything else. This car was also disappointing in the dirt, almost as disappointing as the Raptor. It ran a 155.1 on HTV2 and a 326.9 on Rumble, which gave it a combined time of 521.9. Its problem is the top speed in the dirt. The faster dirt cars have the ability to do 140 plus miles an hour in a straight line in the dirt, and this one tops out at around 127. I played around with tire options, suspension, and downforce, and it's still underperformed. It sits in the 20th spot on my list, so I'd recommend trying a different car for dirt races, but here's my fastest dirt build. Same 308 horsepower flat six engine, Ultimate Plus Engine Parts and Ultimate Dual Turbo, Ultimate 5x3 Pound NOS, Super Rally Suspension and Super Brakes, Elite Off-Road Tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Elite Plus 8-Speed Gearbox, Pro Rally Differential, Maximum Steering Sensitivity, and Minimum Downforce. And that's it for this one, guys. Super short and to the point. Thank you so much for the continuing support. I know I've made a few Project Cars 3 videos lately, but I'm still making Need for Speed content because you guys have been super supportive. As always, I raise a barks to all the Militia subs, and if you have any questions about this video or any video, make sure you DM me on Instagram. Thanks, everyone. I will catch you on the next one. Trigger out. Thank you